<clears throat> Hi guys, um, tooth formation in 10 minutes. I'll try to make you understand it completely only in 10 minutes. Um, here we start with, um, I'm going to give an example of um, the formation of a mandibular incisor tooth. So here by the end of the fifth week, um, you can see here the oral epithelium and um, the um, underneath the oral epithelium is the ectomesenchyme of the mandible. Okay, the first step here happens by the formation or the invagination of the oral epithelium to form what's called a tooth bud. Okay, um, and this is called the bud stage. Um, the next step is here, the oral epithelium also will extend here to form the, and that's in about 9 to 11 weeks, to form what's called the dental lamina. The dental lamina extends here to the enamel organ, which is inside what's called the dental sac. The dental sac is formed of the dental follicle and the dental papilla. The dental papilla is basically the ectomesenchyme of the jaw, and the ectomesenchyme is squeezed here to form the dental papilla. So basically, the um, the oral epithelium here extends and forms the dental lamina, enamel organ, this is the enamel organ, and here is the dental sac surrounding it, which contains dental follicle and dental papilla. This is all together is the dental sac, and this whole thing, the sac with the enamel organ, is called the tooth germ, okay? All right, next is um, the differentiation of the enamel organ. Um, it's, it's very important, and this is called the bell stage, by the way. Forgot to write it down. Um, so here is the differentiation of the enamel organ. You could see that here, the enamel organ um, differentiated into the inner here, um, the inner in enamel epithelium here inside, and the outer enamel epithelium, okay, and still same thing, surrounded by the dental follicle, and here is the dental papilla. Okay, and this is the ectomesenchyme of the dental papilla, and not very important, but um, just add it to your uh, information. Here, the layer that's close to the enamel epithelium is called the stratum intermedium, and between them is called the stellate reticulum. Okay, the area where at the tip here, where the outer enamel epithelium meets with the inner enamel epithelium is called the cervical loop, which has a big importance in the formation of the root area. We're going to get back to this part. Okay, so again, the enamel organ here, everything's still the same here, the sac, the papilla, um, and the follicle, and the enamel organ has differentiated into inner enamel epithelium, outer enamel epithelium. They meet together in the cervical loop, and here is the line of the stratum intermedium, and the stellate reticulum, okay? And by the way, by that time too, the alveolar bone is being formed, right? Next step here of the bell stage, very important. Um, in that stage here, I'm focusing actually on this area, okay? I'm not picturing the outer enamel epithelium, just this area, the inner enamel epithelium and the dental papilla. Here, this is a focusing on that part. So what's going to happen is this inner enamel epithelium that was right there, okay, will elongate, okay, as you see here, will elongate and move up. And this elongation will induce the ectomesenchyme to become which was already pre-odontoblast to become a elongated as well and to become a, an um, odontoblast. So basically, again, the inner enamel epithelium 
will elongate and move up here and this will induce the preodontoplast which is the ectomesenchyme to become odontoplast okay and this odontoplast will move down leaving here the formation of the dentine matrix and cytoplasm as well but anyway just just know that the elongation of the inner enamel epithelium will enhance the formation of the odontoblast which elongates and moves down leaving the dental matrix and then these elongated cells which are the pre-ameloblast will transfer to ameloblast moving up here leaving enamel matrix okay so here's enamel matrix here's the team matrix this is the formed odontoblast and this is the formed ameloblast okay so next step is i think you can guess it very easily is the calcification of the enamel that was formed and then the calcification of the dentine that was formed um, and this is the odontoblasts are still in the dental papilla um, and this is a big difference here that the odontoblasts of the dentine are still here the one that formed the dentine are still existing but the one that formed the enamel will uh, basically degenerate or lose the function and will not be able to um, form any more enamel that's why um, your enamel does not regenerate um, I don't think it's very important for you to know the future of the outer enamel epithelium I can talk about it at the end of the lecture anyway um, okay remember uh, we said we're gonna go back to the cervical loop here you can see that we already have formed the crown enamel and dentine and this is the dental papilla um, let's see how the uh, root is going to be formed. It's going to be formed by the help of the cervical loop. Let's focus on the cervical loop and see how it looks like. As you can see, it's where the inner epithelium and the outer epithelium meet. So this is the outer epithelium. Okay. This is the inner epithelium here. And this is the formed enamel and this is the formed dentine and this is the odontoblast, right? So they come together here, okay, those inner and outer epithelium cells, and they form what's called the cervical loop, which is made by Hertwig epithelial root sheath, or H-E-R-S. And these cells, basically here I wrote it down, will induce the odontoblast to form root dentine. So here you see those are the odontoblasts, here you can see it right here as well see those odontoblasts okay this here the root sheath will induce the odontoblast to form the dentine through the root like this here all the way to form the root okay and this is how the root dentine is formed by the help of the HERS cells after the dentine is formed these cells, which is called the Hertwig epithelial root sheath, will degenerate to give some space to the cementoblast to start depositing cementum. And this cementoblast, cementoblast is basically coming from the dental follicle cells. Here there's going to be some cells formed. These will transfer into the cementoblast and by this here, Imagine here the dentine is formed and then these cells will start to degenerate and the cementoblast will start to deposit cementum on the surface of the dentine of the root, okay? Um, by the way, they don't completely degenerate. There's some left over of these cells that's called the epithelial rest of molasses and these cells will help for the formation of the periodontal ligament so um i don't know just in case if you would like to know it um this is how the periodontal ligament are formed from the epithelial rest of molasses which are coming from the non-degenerated h-e-r-s or the root sheath 
And I guess um, this is um, this is all what you need to know. Um, thank you.